Hey everybody and welcome back to Submarine History. Today we're going to have a briefing on the German Type 7 U-boat. That's right, the Type 7 U-boat, the most iconic submarine of World War II and maybe even the most iconic submarine in history. You've read about it in books and you've seen it in movies. It's the first thing you'll probably think about when someone brings up the subject of the Battle of the Atlantic. It's the star of a series of submarine simulators and now it's in World of Warships as they continue to develop, test, and improve submarine play for that game. Today, uh, we'll look at the development of the Type 7 U-boat and talk about its specs. There will be a table towards the end of the brief that shows the difference uh, between the versions, and uh, we'll close things out by looking at how it's modeled in uh, World of Warships. I'd, I'd like to get into talking about quality of life aboard the Type 7 and spotlight uh, specific, boat, specific boats, tactics, and the role of the Type 7 uh, that it played in the Battle of the Atlantic, but it's just too large of a subject, uh, so we'll handle those things down the road through shorter individual briefings. Um, as always, uh, feel free to start the briefing if you want to study a slide. Uh, and if you have questions, post them below in the comments or hop on the Submarine History Discord uh, to discuss it. And uh, you'll see an icon for the Discord server in the lower right-hand side of the banner for this YouTube channel. Um, make sure you read through the description of this video. Uh, I have some interesting links, including a 360-degree virtual tour of the U-995 uh, in a documentary about life on board the modern Type 212 submarine, the U-32, uh, which is actually pretty cool to see how things have and how they haven't changed on U-boats over 75 years. All right, so let's go. Our references for today. Now, um, previously, we had gone over in briefing number eight, uh, that was the Type 2 U-boat brief, uh, we went over how the Treaty of Versailles had prevented Germany from engaging in anything related to submarines after World War I. However, groups within the German military industrial establishment saw the value of maintaining a core capability related to submarine design and construction. So this would be accomplished through the establishment of an independent design firm in the Netherlands called IVS in 1922. IVS completed many designs for international customers during the 20s, but only really found success in actually building submarines in the early 1930s with the E-1 project for Spain, which was the basis for the German Type 1A U-boat, and two projects for Finland. The Finnish proje uh, projects were the CV-707 project, that was Vesico, a 250-ton coastal submarine, uh, that's shown on the left, uh, and also the basis for the German Type 2 U-boat. And there was also the CV-702 project, uh, the, the, the uh, Vetti Heinen class, I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, that's shown on the right, that was a 500-ton submarine, which would end up being the basis for the German Type 7. So the, the CV-702 project itself was based off the German World War I UB-3 attack in UC-3, mine lane U-boats. Now, uh, with the success of the National Socialists in the summer of 1932, the Reichsmarine, under the command of Eric Radar, uh, developed the reconstruction program of 1932, uh, with the goal of building up a modern, battle-worthy Navy by 1938. This plan included the construction of eight 500-ton boats, based off the CV-702 project, and eight 800-ton ton boats based off the Spanish E-1 project. So why so, so, why so few U-boats? Um, since the conclusion of World War I and the introduction of ASDIC, or sonar, uh, in the early 1920s, there was actually a feeling by naval leaders uh, both in England and Germany that the future of submarines was probably limited. And those reasons included uh, they were too slow to keep up with surface fleets. They were affected far worse by bad weather than surface ships. And ASDIC made it possible to locate and attack blind, slow-moving submerged submarines. So this prevailing uh, idea of the utility of, U -boat, of submarines, this leads to a preference for the building of a surface fleet 
rather than a U-boat fleet. With the signing of the Anglo-German Naval Agreement of 1935, radar uh, moved Karl Donitz from command of the Emden to become, to become Führer de Untersee Boat, FDU, of the first flotilla, uh, that was the uh, Wedigen flotilla, that had three U-boats, uh, the U-7, the U-8, and the U-9, which were all Type II boats. It should be noted that at this point, Donuts had 25 years of naval service, but only a fraction of it was with submarines, and that was during World War I. Uh, the rest of his time was devoted to the surface fleet. However short this, uh, his time in U-boats was, Donuts had been thinking on and off over the years about how submarines could be employed in future wars. His own experience as captain of the U-68, which was a UB-3 submarine during World War I, led him to think that a future naval war could be won through a new approach to the implementation of U-boats. And Donitz's plan for U-boats consisted of three elements. Number one, surface attacks at night in order to negate the power of ASDIC, as opposed to daytime submerged attacks from longer distances. Number two, short-ranged attacks, attacking from 500 meters or less, as opposed to the conventional thought of attacks from three kilometers out. U-boats would use their maneuverability, excuse me, their maneuverability and diving depth to evade counterattacks by service ships um, after they attacked first. And then three, the use of multiple U-boats in coordinated fashion, the wolf pack, to maximize the number of torpedoes when attacking convoys. Central to these ideas was a small, maneuverable U-boat with a low surface profile, sufficient fuel and torpedoes to make it possible to patrol from the Black Sea to the British Isles and the North Atlantic for extended periods. And by that we mean greater than 30 days. Because of his experience with the UB-3 U-boat, Donitz saw the answer to his plan in the Type 7 U-boat program. Nine versions of the Type 7 U-boat would be proposed in or built for a total of 703 boats, with the Type 7C the largest produced version at 568 boats commissioned during the war. Construction of the Type 7s began in 1935, a year after the Type 2 started to be built. Type 7C slash 41s would continue to be built into 1945. Build time was almost twice that of a Type 2 U-boat, typically 9 to 12 months from the lane of the keel to commissioning. Early experience with the Type 7A U-boat showed that a single rudder performed poorly. So starting with the 7B series, two rudders were provided, and that made the Type 7s a highly maneuverable boat that was easy to handle by its crew. A well-trained crew of 48 could achieve a dive time of 30 seconds or less. All Type 7 versions had four bow tubes and one stern tube. They were able to carry 11 to 14 torpedoes, uh, and that depended on the version. Up to 26 mines could be carried for mine lane operations. Deck armament varied by hull version in the period of time during the war, but typically consisted of an 88 millimeter deck gun and different combinations of 20 millimeter and 37 millimeter anti-air cannon. So for the rest of the briefing, we'll center our conversation around the 7C, uh, since it was by far the largest version within the class. Um, we'll talk about the other versions when we get to the comparison table towards the end of the brief. The Type 7C displays 769 tons surfaced, 871 tons submerged with a length of 67.1 meters and a 6.2 meter beam. Twin six-cylinder, four-stroke, supercharged diesel engines provided 2,800 horsepower to propel a surface boat at up to 8,500 nautical miles at 10 knots, or a maximum speed of 17.17, excuse me, 17.7 .7 knots maximum, and 80 nautical miles at four knots submerged with 750 electric horsepower. Snorkels, radar detectors, and transmitters, passive and active sonar were all used in different combinations at various times on the Type 7C during the war. So you would classify the Type 7C as a coastal submarine that, with support, 
could cross an ocean. Uh, patrol duration varied from 30 days without support up to 60 days or longer at sea with support. Some of the more famous Type 7 U-boats include the U-48, which was a 7B, which holds the all-time record for tonnage sunk at 306,874 tons over 13 war patrols. This boat would actually survive the war, uh, serving as a training vessel, vessel before being scuttled on uh, May 3, 1945 at uh, Neustadt. Gunther Preen is probably the most famous captain to skipper a Type 7 U-boat. He completed 10 war patrols on the U-47, which was also a Type 7B, sinking 162,769 tons of shipping, putting him ninth on the all-time list of successful U-boat captains. However, he's most known for his sinking of HMS Royal Oak at Scapa Flow on October 14, 1939. Preen and the U-47 were lost at sea around March 7th, 1941. Um, and of course, we can't close out our discussion of the Type 7 U-boat without mentioning the U-96, which was a Type 7 C U-boat. Uh, and it was the basis for Lothar Gunther's uh, Buckham's book, Das Boat. For the time period of the book, uh, which is stated to be in the fall winter of 1941, Heinrich Lehmann Willenbrock uh, would have been the captain. Willenbrock completed eight of his 10 war patrols in the U-96, finishing six on the all-time U-boat captain list with 170,237 tons of shipping sunk. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> he was fortunate to, to survive the war, uh, and he served as a consultant during the filming of the movie Das Boot. And I'm just thinking how crazy that would have been for the actors uh, to be there on the set with the guy who actually skippered that boat <laughs> and taking your technical direction from him. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at a comparison table and then we'll close out the briefing with a little footage from World of Warships. Okay, so here's our table. <clears throat> Excuse me, on the left, um, you this will go by rows. We start with the 7A, uh, and then move down through the 7B, the 7C, the 7C41, the 7D, and then finally the 7F. <clears throat> um, a couple notes here. The seven, the the two boats that you're probably not really ever going to really hear much about are the 7D and the uh, 7F. Um, the 7D was actually an ocean-going mine lane uh, submarine. It's, uh, it's, it's longer, and they stretched out the hull to accommodate more fuel, which you can see as we move from left to right on the table. The 7F uh, was intended to be an ocean-going torpedo supply boat. And you can see here, it's, it's even a little bit longer than the 7D, uh, with a maximum range of 14,700 uh, nautical miles at 10 knots. Um, but this 7F seven, this seven, uh, torpedo supply U-boat, I think this would have been a little bit different. I think it was uh, from the Type 10, the, uh, the milk cows. The milk cows were more of like uh, an overall, you know, submarine resupply, almost submarine tender kind of um, boat with, in addition to having torpedoes, you know, it had stocks of food, it had machine shops, they could make parts, do that kind of thing. And uh, the 7F was basically just a whole bunch of torpedoes in there. It carried 14 torpedoes for its own use, and then it carried up to 26 uh, torpedoes that it could uh, parcel out to other U-boats. Uh, other um, on this table, three boats that you're not going to see, because we at the beginning of the brief we said that there were nine, uh, nine versions. Here we are showing six. There was the type. There was a plan for the type 7C slash 42 and the 7C slash 43. Um, the 7C slash 42 was going to use uh, a stronger steel, uh, a Krupp, a Krupp manufactured steel. The 7C slash 43 was an improvement upon uh, the 7C 42 by increasing the torpedo tubes from four and one to six and four. Those two boats, while they were planned, 
uh, they end up not getting built because the decision is made to um, just go right to the design, development, and construction of the Type 21 and Type 23 U-boats. The other seven, uh, you, uh, the, the other Type 7 U-boat you're not going to see here, and there's very little, there's almost no information about this, um, but it was the Type 7E, and it was a proposal, and the proposal was to use two-stroke diesel engines. Now, why would you want to do that? Um, if you know, you know, if you're if you're a car if you're a car and motorcycle guy, you'll you'll understand this. And the reasoning is, a two you can get the same power out of a two-stroke engine uh, at half the size, and that in doing that would enable you to design your hull to be substantially uh, thicker and stronger. But uh, that 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 boat it really never leads the pro the proposal uh, stage. I think they had I think they had problems just either tr developing a, an adequate two-stroke diesel motor or you know there were other issues, but it never got off the ground. Um, one of the other things I'll point out on here is that the the di really the difference between the seven C and the seven C forty one is that the seven C had an 18.5 millimeter thick pressure hull, and the Type 7C-41 uh, had a 21 millimeter thick pressure hull, and that enabled it to have a crush depth of 300 meters versus 250 meters for the Type 7C. Um, I haven't included that information on here because we went over this in another briefing that I did on crush depth. And here we are at the end of the brief, uh, but before we go, let's take a look at and see how the Type 7C is modeled in uh, World of Warships. In-game, they've modeled uh, the U-69, which was the lead boat in the 7C series. It was laid down on November 11th, 1939, and commissioned on November 2nd, 1940. So just under a year to build, launch, test, and commission into service. During its career, it completed 10 war patrols under four different captains. It was credited with 17 sinkings for 67,515 tons. Its war patrols took it pretty much all over the Atlantic from the British Isles to Greenland, the U.S. Eastern Seaboard, and Africa, so they put a lot of miles on it. She was sunk on February 17, 1943, when she was ran by HMS Fane, which was a British F-Class destroyer. If you're interested to know um, about the kinds of things the U-69 did on its war patrols, there are two KTBs for the U-69, which are available over at uboatarchive.net, and uh, it's interesting reading. So let's uh, let's take a spin around the boat here. As you can see, um, World of Warships, um, they play to their strength, which is their art department, and they've done a fantastic job modeling this boat. The detail on the 88 millimeter deck gun, um, the detail on the bridge, including the wood planking that they would use to keep their fall weather gear from sticking to the metal uh, sides of the bridge. Uh, they even have uh, the, UZ the, the UZO targeting binoculars. So that's a really nice touch. And it really looks great, uh, even with just a simple camouflage applied to it. So you have to keep in mind that um, World of Warships, you know, everything looks great in game, but it doesn't play like a traditional submarine simulator that uh, you might be familiar with. You know, it's an action arcade game, and um, they make certain compromises with the real-life characteristics of the ship just so that uh, they can be playable in a 12v12 20-minute 12, uh, match. But that's okay. Just the visual um, of the submarine heading off into battle at the st start of a match, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the briefing and we'll come back again. Feel free to contact me via email. I am on Discord, Twitter, and I do have a Patreon. Thanks to USNI for doing the job they do so well. 
their publishing arm is an invaluable resource to the preservation of naval history. Consider becoming a member so their work can continue long into the future. Till next time, peace out.